generic messages, vague messages, they're not going to do that for you. So you really want to just be human. I always say like, you know, recruiters or hiring managers hire people, not robots. You really want to just connect and share why you're messaging that person, why this is your dream role, your dream company, and see where that stems to. And Emily, just to really piggyback on, on that, um, don't get frustrated either. Um, yeah. There are some great recruiters out there, and there's frankly, there's not some good ones either. Um, and some of them will not return your your messaging. Some of it could be for various reasons. But don't get frustrated. Um, I urge you and continue to just continue to poke, continue to establish those relationships because the warm networking of relationship is what's going to get you. And Emily did bring a really good point. It's going to take some time. It's not something that's done overnight. Um, we've been working here at Tesla. This took me months of networking and trying to make a connection. So it's not something that is done right away. You can have the most brilliant person out there, but if you don't have that warm connection um, and have the patience and the courage to go through it, I just beg you not to get discouraged, but um, there's always a way through through it one way or another. And then you're going to have amazing recruiters like our panelists here today who are going to reach out to you and say, hey, thanks for thanks for reaching out. I'll get back to you soon. Or I'm not, we're not currently looking for someone right now, but there'll be some sort of communication on that. So Emily, you brought some amazing points on that. Yeah. And I want to also awesome. share yeah. really quick. Oh. Sorry, I just want to um, piggyback off of that because I know it's so discouraging when you're putting yourself out there and you don't get a response. And a lot of people take that personally, but do not take anything personally. You know, ultimately everybody's doing the best job that they can. It doesn't mean anything about you. You're less qualified. You're less, you're, you're not good enough for a response. Like do not take it personally. So just thank you for sharing that perspective. Awesome. And for those that are, uh, I know some people are asking questions. Uh, for those that raise their hand, um, just because I don't like to pull people, I don't pull people over. If you can write your question in the chat box, I'll be able to see that. And so um, I will ask one question. Uh, we'll get to more questions later, but one question I thought that really stood out: um, introverts, and then how do you how do you provide counseling virtually? So I want to bring those together. So from an introvert <laughs> in this whole new world, how do you build these relationships? And since, as Lorna said earlier, there's no more conferences, there's no more meetups. How do I connect or how do I counsel people virtually? So if you guys real quick and answer that, those, those two questions. Um, so the first one is deals with if I'm an introvert, how do I connect? How do I network? And then how do I counsel people from a career standpoint virtually? Or how do I find a job virtually as well? So whoever wants to take that away, please share. I'd love to take the introvert one. Okay, so I myself am an introvert, and I feel like whenever I hear people say, but I'm introverted, I'm shy, it's awkward, like they already psych themselves out with that label, um, but what I actually want you to reframe is how powerful you are as an introvert, because truth be told, like communication really is, and like, networking and building relationships really is allowing space to listen to the other person and typically as an introvert you are a very deep thinker you are very good at connecting with another person and even more so now digitally you know virtually it could be one-on-one -on -one, and that's beautiful because you don't have to like put yourself into this big room of 300 people um so i just want to challenge you to start looking at how you can turn introvert um not so much as a weakness but as a strength or as a superpower because you, I imagine, have friends. You were able to win people over. You have, um, you know, taken on projects. You've gotten recommendations. You've maybe even had like internships or other work experience. So you're good at talking about yourself. You're good at connecting with strangers. Really tap into that piece of it versus, again, putting this label that you are already psyching yourself out with. I also wanted to awesome. just add to that. I just wanted to add to what Emily uh, mentioned. Um, I was actually going to say the same thing. This is the perfect time now for introverts to start practicing uh, their way of um, networking with folks because it's not as intimidating and you're virtually connecting with these people, whether it's through an email or through a phone call or through a video chat. But in addition to that, um, really um, uh, realizing how much 
more of an opportunity that you do have within that space. And then once you are able to, you know, once we, you know, the, the um, quarantine is lift, lifted and people are going back into these public spaces and these networking events, it may be smaller, but still you're going to have to interact um, uh, physically and face to face with folks. And it doesn't always have to be, hey, my name is Debbie Douglas. I, my, I, I go to this school. I just graduated from here. It could be as easy as just a nice um, open um, icebreaker as, you know, I love your necklace, uh, you know, have a genuine conversation, a commonality that you can find between you and that person to start the conversation. And then you can segue into naturally, you know, this is why I'm here. It's so great to meet you, X, Y, Z. But start off with just something as simple as finding a commonality, common ground between you and that person. How can you connect organically and naturally? And I think that takes away some of the angst around, oh my God, I have to network with this person. Networking doesn't have to be a scary term. That's right. Thank you. Lauren, I, I saw you were getting ready to say something. I want to come to you because I want to, I want to include you on your, your answer, but I have another question that I think you'll definitely be able to respond to. Okay. Um, in addition to the question, it says, due to COVID-19, the position I was in the sec oh, sorry, I'll read it. Sorry. Due to COVID-19, the position I was in second round interviews was pulled would connecting with the hiring manager on LinkedIn be a good move for me or frowned upon? You're a senior director. How yes, do you yes, feel and about yes. That? Do, and, it. And, 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 <laughs> okay, okay. do it. And do it. Yes. Um, you know, look, I think what people need to understand is it's just as tough for us on the other end when we have to pull the position, right? Because you have a team somewhere that's sitting down wishing they had the extra resource, they were planning to have new talent come in. Um, depending on how far they were, they may have already had big plans for this person, um, announce the person, who knows, right? So I think, yes, you want to stay on this person's radar. I, I really do believe that we are going to come out of this, you know, and we will come out of this at some point strong. It's going to take time. Um, for those who've been in New York and went through, you know, 2008, went through 9-11, we, we saw much of this um, as far as it related to downturns in the job market. And we bounce back. And I think the way we often bounce back is by reinventing roles and rethinking what we need as teams. So, you know, my advice to many of the people on, on you know, on uh, the call right now are really going to be start to think about where the future is taking us. Healthcare technology. Um, we've talked a lot about virtual opportunity. What, do, what shape does that take? Um, I don't know if you guys have noticed, there's been a huge uptick in Instagram e-commerce, right? I mean, there's so many ways to kind of break in, even consulting, small business. Um, it is really the time to kind of reshape what the job search looks like and ultimately where you want to land on the other end of it. But yes, absolutely make the connection. It doesn't hurt. And I would even check in every few months, you know, hey, still very interested, still keeping up with what you guys are doing, you know, would love to stay close. And I guarantee you, really great recruiters are also making sure they're keeping those folks warm. That's great. That's great. Uh, yo, Nohan, that's Nohan, I'm going to go to you. I got another question, Nohan. I think you said you go everywhere to get recruits. You're going, you know, you know you'll go reach people all places. And so this question came up and she actually raised her hand. So Kimberly, forgive me, but I'm, I'm asking your question uh, for Nohan because he, he was a man. He said, this is what she said. Um, she said, I did raise my, oh, sorry. <laughs> for high school, seniors graduating who need a gap internship. Oh, Debbie, this may be up your alley and Yarid. Um, do they do the same, reach out to you? These are harder to find in high school grads are needing help. Internships, Nohan, this is high school students. Debbie and Yarid, I believe you can answer this. What do high school students do right now? I think a uh, great question. I think uh, we know that one of the challenges as far as in California is that we can only hire 18 and up, right? Uh, I think that for high school graduating seniors, you guys should be super positive above anyone else. Uh, I think you guys are the, probably the one of the smartest generation and I think really one of the most that understand how to be on the offense always. And I think it's literally consistently just reaching out, right? Again, um, kind of going back to the whole concept of like, partner with someone, reach out, ask them for an informational interview, right? Ask them for that journey. But I also would say, 
take a part-time job or go to your local community where they can get you connected to find an internship. I think a lot of times we don't understand the power of the resources that are within cities that can help you get connected to an internship. You just need one small internship that can literally set you up to a bigger one. Cause once you're in the space of a small mom and pop uh, business, you never know who they know, right? Going back to it's not what you know, it's who you know. You never know who that person may be connected to that can allow you then when you get into either community college or you're going into your first year of uh, college that then it allows you to then uh, continually build that experience. So I think one, the best way to find those internships, that gap, right, for high school graduating seniors is 100% go to your local work source centers and reach out to them. I work with many of them here in LA, and believe me, they have so many great resources. I know I have friends in New York that are recruiters as well for Nike, and they have amazing resources as well for the cities, right? So it's a matter of just reaching out and building that, but also, again, and, I'm a, and this is something that we're all telling you, talk to people. Um, it's funny, and I'll, I'll close with this. They've said that introverts have actually uh, excelled during this time because it's this that allows them to feel more comfortable in a room that they're used to, and they don't have to be physically present yet, right? So I think really the challenge has been for us extroverts. I'm an extrovert, right? So I have to wait patiently to be called upon, right? So it's, it's interesting that dynamic where who would have thought that Emily's an introvert, right? And I know a lot of you that are watching are like, there's no way she's an introvert. But again, <laughs> it's understanding is this space that allows you to practice how to start engaging with people. So I would say for my high school seniors, uh, be positive. I'll give you a quick example. We're getting ready to open a brand new store uh, here in the city of Watts, California. It's a community door. I worked with the Watts WorkSource Resource Center we had uh, a couple high school graduates that actually went through a competitive process and they throughout the years have volunteered at the WorkSource Center that build up their uh, skills to show up at an interview. And it's exciting that I found out out of uh, uh, all the interviews that two of them are actually gonna be hired as part-time employees when we get ready to open the store, right? So that, that's a testimonial there in itself that uh, WorkSource Centers do work for our seniors. And just to, awesome. off, just to piggyback off of that, um, the other thing I would also suggest is leverage your city. Um, your city should have leadership programs that you can be part of, youth leadership programs, and a lot of them have partnered with big companies to actually create, um, host you at events. Um, I know at Tesla, we bring quite a few high school students and college students, community students, to take a factory tour of how our Teslas are made. And it's just so eye-opening for you to have a better understanding of what the company is about. We also have a phenomenal workforce development and education team here. Um, so, for example, we're going to be actually doing a presentation to Compton Unified School District on STEM Academy, right, on kind of the engineering roles. So those are ways that a lot of these companies are giving back to, to high school students. So if you are doing research on a particular company, try and see if they have some sort of outreach program for high school students, because most of the time they may have that. Uh, and if they don't, leverage your resources, whether it's with your city, whether it's with your high school counselor. And if you don't find it, make it like make this opportunity like this is your time to be innovative to be creative to adapt to the change so don't wait for things to be constantly be given to you where you're like oh well, it's not available oh it's not there okay if it's not there create it make it happen right because you're probably making an opportunity for so many folks that are not um you know so anyway i can keep going but just a few uh words of of uh <laughs> information on that <laughs> i was oh, yeah, and I was just going to say basically the same thing that what uh, Nohan and Yared said. Um, but so, for example, Viacom, we have a very structured internship program. So you, you would have to get academic credit for um, your internship. It's usually for a certain amount of weeks per se. So, you know, if that's not afforded to you uh, because of that particular requirement, uh, then again, start from your internal resources, like uh, you already said, you know, your guidance counselor, um, you know, also um, uh, creating that opportunity for yourself. So for example, you know, if you're interested in production and you wanna be a production assistant, 
utilize your friends and your own skill sets and create, uh, you know, a show um, and put it out on uh, social media. That's the beauty of now in 2020. You can literally learn anything, do anything, and um, provide um, a, um, a service to anyone, anywhere, at any time. Um, so I think just really thinking creatively of how you can get yourself out there. Um, and in addition to that, just continuously um, seeking out volunteer opportunities so you may not get paid for it. Um, you know, go to your local um, radio station and see if they need support. Um, they may be struggling as well, especially during this time where they don't, can't afford to pay a certain rate for someone that they would typically have paid a certain amount um, for. Now you are stepping in because you need that experience. Um, so it's a win-win situation. So just really think creatively about like, if it's not here, how can I create that opportunity for myself as well and utilize the resources around me? Awesome. Lauren, you're going to take it? Yeah, just really quickly. I think one thing that also kind of flies under the radar is we're in a census year um, and we are in going into a campaign year with a lot of local and national level campaigns. So, I mean, some of the best experience you can get is working on a campaign. It's going to teach you everything from communication to project management to picking up the phone and cold calling people, which takes a lot of guts. And some will pay and some are going to be volunteer experience, but it's a really fantastic way to get involved in your community, um, make a lot of connections and relations, and, and on the other end of that, obviously do something for a good cause. So I, I definitely think that's an untapped resource for many. I want to move on to the next question. <laughs> I've got one question. Um, the next question I want to ask, and I, I know it on my just on hands up. I want to ask this, and we'll get back to question. I know there's more questions. Um, my next question I want to ask each of you um, is what I call the unwritten qualities. Um, you know, what are the the unwritten qualities? The things that recruiters look for in candidates that may not be in the job description. I understand the job description is important. And if one of you can clarify, I've heard someone say that you have to have at least have seven out of ten. Some say all of the job descriptions. Some say it's better not to have all of them so it creates place for improvement. So I've heard mixed reviews about that. But in addition to those job descriptions, what are some of the unwritten qualities that you look for in the interviewing process that really make a difference? Uh, I want to take this one. I think one of the biggest things that we do not understand, the unwritten quality, storytelling. I think that if each and every one of you truly understand and is willing to be a good storyteller of what you want and what you're seeking and where you came from and where you envision yourself, where you're going with the employer in front of you. Uh, that, that in itself is bar none, like one of the best unwritten qualities is really storytelling. And I also will say passion. And, and, I, and I will caution with that word passion because a lot of times passion doesn't mean being loud and energetic passion is being very just um it's like that 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 knife that just cuts through butter that is just it, it's just something where like you feel it there's a presence so presence passion storytelling for me as far as you got to remember nike we are the greatest storytellers behind our products but it is only because we have the greatest storytellers of our people that share their story, right? So I think that's something really big that I want you guys to understand is how can you, and it goes back to an elevator pitch, understand how can you tell a story to be able to seek out that uh, job that you're looking for? So I think for me, uh, passion, storytelling, uh, and a presence. I think there's those, those, I don't know, there's just something about that that really uh, you feel it different in a room. <laughs> I would definitely say, um, in addition to what Nohan said, um, flexibility and adaptability. How can you showcase that you possess those type of skill sets, especially during a time like this where we're in constant change and we're continuously evolving and we don't know what tomorrow brings, um, whether it's in your position or within your company. So being able to, um, you know, uh, not resist change or not feel as though you can't handle X or Y because it's not what you signed up for. You know, uh, job descriptions are evolving as we speak probably. Um, so being very flexible, being very adaptable and definitely increase your level of skill set. Give them more than what they ask for. If they see that you have the 10 qualities that they're looking for on the required qualifications. And then you come with the curveball with two extra amazing skill sets that complement that. Whoa, 
we're like, we're tapped in, we're dialed in. This person could be that superstar that we're looking for. And especially when you're, you know, if you're going to shoot for the stars and try to uh, apply for positions at major brand companies, they're always typically going to go with the cream of the crop. You know, if we're looking at a thousand plus resumes for one job, we can easily slice and dice on who's going to rise to the top. And your, your, your resume has to speak to the job at hand. I mean, that's just, that's just facts. You know, the, the statistics show that uh, recruiters typically have between eight to 10 seconds, not, not, not minutes, eight to 10 seconds before they can decide whether or not this is a yes and this is a no because of just the volume, not because we don't care and we, we, we just are not putting in the time. It's just because of the volume that companies like uh, Nike or Viacom or Tesla, um, you know, has coming in because um, it's, it's so enticing for them. So if you can say to yourself as a candidate, I feel confident to be considered a, a, a competitive candidate for that position. And I am knocking off those skill sets in addition to like bringing them something new that they, you didn't even think that they would ask for, then you're already ahead of the game. That's awesome. Any other comments? I'd also oh, add to that, um, kind of going back on to passion, I feel like a lot of communication is not necessarily what you're saying, but also just the way you're making someone feel. So when it comes to looking at, you know, somebody's resume, when you can see, you know, that they have no typos, that they've really structured this, that it's, you know, clean, it shows their projects, like you can kind of tell their story. That's really helpful. And then when you get into the interview, you know, what I was always looking for in fresh grads wasn't necessarily that they had all the skill sets. I didn't, ex I, I didn't, um, expect them to have all of the experience. But when they told me something like, you know, I'm really passionate about clean energy. This is what I want to do. Like, I want to actually like hear from you. What kind of projects did you do? Like, how did you demonstrate that? Did you write any articles? You know, did you start a YouTube channel or podcast or interview people on this topic? Because you can say you're passionate about something, but your actions speak louder than your words. And it's really like, how do you how do you make that person feel at the end of the day and consider that as the entire package? That's awesome. That's to awesome. To that, um, we have a very fearless leader at Tesla, Elon Musk, and his presence, his spirit almost uh, really kind of resonates all across our company. Um, so when we are looking for candidates, we're looking for someone with an entrepreneurial spirit, someone that really can come in and hit the ground running. Uh, we are not in a position where we're doing a lot of training. So you really have to come in, hustle, learn, be curious, be courageous, um, lift and shift, adapt, change. I mean, everything you can kind of think of, it, it's really ingrained, um, not just from Elon, but from his direct reports to our managers, to people at, on the factory line, all of us, right? We're all kind of in this kind of hustle mode of like trying to be the best we can in the world. So when we're looking for those type of candidates, we want that passion to be there. Um, and we want you to not just through your words, but through your actions and Similar to what Emily mentioned, you know, when you come up and say, you know, during my time whether through this COVID moment or prior to that, I was able to w build a web application, right? I was able to build this programming language or whatever the case may be, but we really want to make sure that you have a good understanding of what you're getting yourself into. Um, because sometimes it could just be the idea of a company. And once you're in there, you may not be able to survive with everything going on, right? So it's very important to have for us at least that entrepreneurial spirit um, to be able to, to shine in every aspect. Awesome. Um, I wanna ask this question. Um, wow, time is going by so fast. I wanna ask this question. Um, everybody can hear me, right? You can hear me, you can hear me, you can hear me. Okay, okay, good. Okay, so I wanna ask this question. I feel like one of my ears went out. I wanna ask this question, Lauren, I wanna ask you, you work for the NBA. Um, the NBA was one of the first professional sports association that decided to shut down everything. Um, I am really hoping that it comes back so we can celebrate a championship in Los Angeles with the Los Angeles Lakers. That's just my, uh, that's just my, that's just what I, Now I hang um, up. <laughs> that's just, that's just, I just wanted to share that. Um, but uh, so I did in my, my red leadership survey, one of the things I was looking at was before all this happened, would you rather work a natural location? Would you rather be virtual or would you want a mixture? 
Um, number one was mixture in my survey of 300 millennials and members of Generation Z. But I want to ask you, Lauren, in this transition, what are some major changes that you expect? That uh, what are some major changes that are going to be here to stay? And I like to always tell people get ahead of the curve. So my whole thing when I tell college students all the time is this virtual Zoom is not going anywhere. Virtual communication, virtual meetings is not going anywhere. Virtual presentation, virtual negotiation. I mean, I think this is here to stay. And I think there's ways you can spice this up to be more effective. And there's much more that I'm learning as I go along. But from your standpoint, everyone else as well, what, what do people got to be prepared for to be ahead of the curve? Yep. Um, so one of the learnings that, that has been really interesting is how much we needed to ensure we were coaching managers on being flexible, right? And making sure that they were giving their employees the space to take the personal and professional that blended almost overnight because of COVID and make it work. Right. And that's a really difficult thing to do when you're in the midst of a season suspension and you're trying to get a game going. Right. Because it's all hands on deck. Um, I have to say, I have been so pleasantly surprised at how folks have risen to the occasion. We've done everything from, you know, I'm a mom. I had, a, I had, like I said, I have someone upstairs doing Taekwondo right now, you know, so it's, it's really focusing on how do I make it work for me? So, homeschooling, if I have to log off for three hours to make sure I'm doing homeschool to then kind of jump back on. And that might mean that I'm coming on later, but staying on a little bit later in the evening just to catch up or make sure all things are good. It's really about planning your day and really tight communication, just making sure your teams know, you know, what the schedule is for the day. Um, and look, I think there's also been a little bit of more, which is a nice thing. It's there's more of a, a human side to all of this, right? You see kids popping up on a Zoom when people are having a conference call because they're walking into the room. My son is a huge Spider-Man fan and was shooting webs at people on my WebEx yesterday. You know, it's, 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 it's life, right? It's life, it's blended. And I actually think that it has brought teams together in a really incredible way. Um, I absolutely agree that we're going to be in a position where we're going to see a lot more of this. You know, I think we're going to start really determining like what roles, quite frankly, don't necessarily need to be, you know, 100% of the time in the office. Um, and then I think there's the additional challenge of what does office like look like after this? You know, are we sitting six to 10 feet apart? Are we fully wearing masks inside an office? What does that do to the level of face to face communication or is it a hybrid? So there definitely will be shifts, but I do think that the, the pluses that have come out of this is one, um, parents, people who are caring for elders, people who are juggling school and work and everything else you could possibly think of. This has been a bit of a blessing in disguise because I don't think there's a need to feel guilty anymore for the time that you need for yourself and your family. Um, it's going to be a learning experience for everyone. Um, it's not going to work for some, uh, you know, I'm someone that I enjoy my routine. I enjoy jumping on the train and going to work. And, um, but you know, I think we'll get there and I think we'll find a middle ground. Awesome. Anybody else want to share about that question? And I would just say, um, in addition to what Lauren said is, you know, of course, um, we got to be adaptable. We got to be flexible. Um, you're going to do more with less, um, being prepared, um, for changes. So, um, you know, again, not being resistant to change. Um, so they're going to realize who's resistant versus who's not, who they can say, you know, what, we need this person on our team because they're going to be able to handle this change or this shift more easily than another person who might be a little bit more resistant, um, or is all about, well, I used to do it this way, but this is a whole new, new, uh, environment that we're in right now. So just kind of letting the walls down and just kind of um, knowing that we don't know what tomorrow is. Again, just, just knowing that and, and, and getting uncomfortable with being uncomfortable. You know, I think that is like the key thing here. Um, we just don't know. So um, being prepared for anything and being flexible with that. Awesome. Um, we're going to uh, definitely ask another question before we get out of here. Um, definitely before it's all said and done, as we're getting closer. But I just want to make an announcement for those that are watching before we get back to our panel. Um, for the last 10 years, we've been doing live leadership conferences at, um, in Los Angeles, California. And because of COVID-19, we decided to go to a virtual leadership conference. So for those that may have students 
or for students that may be interested in attending. We will be virtual this year. Um, we're actually going to go two weekends this year instead of one. So it'll be November 20th through the 21st, as well as December 4th through the 5th. So there will be much more programming, much more opportunities to connect, much more opportunity to develop your professional leadership skill set. Um, and a variety of other things. So I just want to make that aware. Obviously, you'll see more information. If you heard about this, you'll probably get more information. But I want to make that aware to everybody. So uh, mark your calendars. I know right now on college campuses, uh, budgets are frozen. But I um, just want to put that in your ear, just something to think about as we get closer. In addition to that, I also do what I call, I've been talking about the Red Leadership Survey. My goal is to get a 1,000 culturally diverse millennials and members of Generation Z. So if you have not done the survey or if you're, you fall, if you were born from 1977 to 2010, I would really, 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 really appreciate it if you would take the time to do the survey. Um, we're getting up to 1,000. Again, it all revolves around retention, leadership, um, recruitment. And so if we can get 1,000 people, I think that'll be really beneficial for those that we work with as far as recruitment, retention, and leadership development. So I put that up there. So if you have a cell phone near you, you can scan that. Uh, right there. If you have not done the survey, I would greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate it. Um, and lastly, I want to get back um, to our to our panel. Um, there's still a lot of questions, but I want to uh, just, I guess, uh, as we have about two minutes left, um, if they have time, that, if they're willing to, I'll, I'll go through the questions as well. But as we get ready to close, um, my question is, um, with the whole COVID-19, how have you stayed physically, mentally, and emotionally well? Because I think um, at, at, at any level, what, you know, what we're going to really talk about when it comes to remote work, it is not necessarily the technicalities, but more so, how are you physically, how are you emotionally, and how are you mentally, which we obviously understand affects our productivity in the workforce. So what have you all done? What have you heard that is beneficial for those that are, um, you know, dealing with those challenges right now? Um. I can go first. And before I go into that, I want to give a huge shout out to Circle of Change. Um, if you have not been part of this amazing conference, I highly, highly advise that you join virtually this year, attend next year. Um, you will leave out of this place on fire. Um, it is so motivating, so inspiring. You get to meet some amazing people from all across the industries and the nuggets of information there is certainly phenomenal. I was able to meet a young gal, Gabby uh, Morales, uh, when I start, first started and she was so timid, so shy. Uh, she came up to me practically shaking and you know she was so courageous and we hit it off and I said, hey, make sure you stay in touch with me and she did and I ended up being her, her mentor until this day. It's been already six years and I've seen her really grow in her career. Um, and, you know, while I was in Los Angeles, we would meet up for some coffee chats and just kind of, you know, go through whatever she was going through, provide some advice. So you just never know who you are going to connect with. So hats off to Circle of Change. I personally love it. Um, so, um, yes. and I already scanned. I already scanned. So I'll make sure I'll do those. <laughs> All right. Thank you. And then to answer your question, for me personally, uh, two things that have helped me throughout this whole entire journey of COVID. To me, most importantly has been prayer. Um, I start my day in prayer and I, it's just a moment of silence that I just need to be by myself with the Lord, put everything in his hands and really just kind of navigate what I'm gonna go through on this day. For me, that's helped me mentally, emotionally, um, and then physically, I make sure that every single day, my husband and I and my little 11 month old, as, as well as my dog, we either go for a jog or a walk. And we no cell phones, we turn off TVs, like none of that to disturb any extra noise that's going out. But to me, that has helped me to re really be able to just kind of center myself and just make sure that I put the people that I care about. Um, and in addition to that, I check in on my family and friends in Los Angeles every so often um, just to see how they're doing. But um, that's my little spiel on how I deal with this. Awesome. So wonderful. Thank you so much, y'all. Awesome. For someone that oh, actually yeah. lives alone, um, I must say the first two weeks were definitely rocky and challenging. I'm like, oh my God, and I'm an extrovert and a social butterfly. So I was like, oh my God, I'm dying. What am I going to do with myself? Um, so imploring a lot of what Yard has done, whether it's prayer, meditation, 
journaling. Um, I'm a big music person, so music has kept me, you know, uh, you know, my spirits up. Uh, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you may have been um, familiar with D Nice's uh, Club Quarantines. Yes. So he's kept me <laughs> rocking every night this whole month. Um, so that's been great. Yeah. Um, of course, staying connected you know, with friends and family virtually like this. We did an Easter Zoom. I know my family's like, here she goes again. And it's like, <laughs> log on, we're, go we're gonna do an Easter Zoom. Um, so in addition to that, um, adding tools to my uh, toolkit, uh, you know, taking online workshops and webinars, I've been doing that. Um, I started pipelining candidates as well, just to make sure that when the floodgates open, I'm not uh, bombarded and then that's extra added stress on top of me um, to just really um, take in a moment for a lot of self-reflection. Um, it's allowed us to realize how little we need um, to do the things that we typically do every day um, and how much we have and be grateful for it. So that has really helped my peace of mind and being like so grateful for the things I currently have now, the fact that I'm still gainfully employed in this time frame where the unemployment rate right now is skyrocketing. So just kind of being thankful for the, the, the small things and not getting bogged down with all the other stuff. And number one for my sanity has been to unplug sometimes from news, from all this um, information overload with negative energy and like, uh, you can only but uh, you can only consume but so much negative energy where it's not going to affect your psyche. So I realized uh, that has truly helped to kind of bring me back out of like the COVID funk is to unplug sometimes and just check in on as needed. I listen to Cuomo once a day and that's it. And that's I get my my news fix and that's it. So <laughs> just kind of finding peace in my peace of mind has been very helpful and working out. <laughs> working out. Yes, working out. Plus five pounds. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. That's a good thing. <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> Lord. Um, I, I would say be patient with yourself. Um, you know, I think we as humans tend to not be comfortable with not having control, right? And this is one situation that no one has control over. Um, we're just kind of, you know, flying by the seat of our pants a bit. Um, so I think it's be patient. You know, if you're snacking too much because you're home, hey get through it, right? You know, pick up a book. Um, you know, I agree with not being glued into the media all day. I think it's tough. I think it's tough and I think it wears people down a bit. Um, and I think there's definitely opportunity to just be kinder with people, more patient with people. You know, one of the biggest things and much respect to anyone who is logged on, who is working in a supermarket, a service, any kind of service industry, um, you are keeping us afloat. <laughs> so be yeah. patient with yourself, be patient with others and focus on getting through it. That's, that's the best advice I could give. Awesome. Emily. <laughs> Yeah, just to pick it back off of everyone, I think all of the suggestions are really great. The media was the biggest thing for me because when all of this hit, I was like refreshing every day, like what's the latest updates? But um, I actually have been working from home for the past six years. So I let me know, like, let me tell you, you all adjust to it. Um, but what I have found that I really need is scheduled in breaks. Um, so if you guys are working, you might feel guilty, like, oh no, if my like Skype you know, availability isn't green, like they're going to think I'm slacking off. But I think it's really important to take some walks to, uh, to like really break up the day because you can't sit there all day anyways. Um, and oftentimes you get so many great ideas and just new um, sparks of I, uh, creativity just by kind of getting out of your day-to-day -day zone. So I would say that's been really helpful from a physical perspective. Um, and then two is I've actually been more productive during this time, just thinking about ways that I could give back in any way. And so, you know, recently I launched a 10 day training series where I just gave career coaching advice for 10 days straight on my Facebook live stream. And, um, you know, it's been really great to be able to connect, to give back, but also just to support the community in any way. Um, and then I would say third is, um, just finding like a new hobby that you could put your creative energy into. Um, I feel like in many ways, like social distancing has actually been like virtual connecting. And I like seeing it that way because I've 
people have always wanted to like connect with my friends from high school. And I just haven't been able to, um, but now I have. And, you know, I've always wanted to make candles and I just got a kit from Amazon <laughs> to learn how to make candles. And so just anywhere you can put in like more positive energy and really just um, channel that somewhere. I think there's a lot of positivity that can come out from this time. Awesome. Awesome. Love it. Noha. Hey guys. Uh, I think for me during this time, what I've had, uh, so something that my family, we love to do. We love to go to the AMC theaters every Tuesday. Clearly that stopped. So we <laughs> evolved immediately and we did now what's called the LMC, the living room movie cinemas. <laughs> uh, and um, you can take that, steal it. Uh, but it's, uh, it's been a good time. We've just uh, had a chance to just check out some movies, uh, you know, be with the family, rent them. Uh, it's been a good time. Also, um, I've disconnected from the media. I try to turn it off. Um, DJ Nice has been clutch. Debbie, let me tell you, uh, just taking it back. And I think for me, it's just um, understanding uh, I have a musical background and uh, just radio background. So uh, for me in my past, and it's just, I've, it's allowed me to be creative. Uh, you know, that I even started a podcast just for the fun of it, to share my passions. So it's been a really cool, just understand that this is a time that when we get out, here's the thing. This is the first time in ages that this ever happened, right? So this is, again, fluid. No one has the right answers to this. We're learning as we go, right? Um, they say that people suffer in isolation, but we heal in community. So press into your community, right? Uh, press into your friend, text somebody, call somebody. Um, just so you know that, look, it's okay to feel a little antsy, have a lot of questions, that's great. My challenge, and I think on behalf of all of us here, come out better and stronger and sharper, right? Um, I'm gonna close you with this uh, quote, and it says that um, haters are a good problem to have because nobody hates the good ones. They hate the great ones. And the late great <laughs> Kobe Bryant said that. that is <laughs> so I'm asking I love you guys it. to be the great ones of this generation, to make every single company and every community that much better. I know we, we, we will go above and beyond and I'm excited for all that we have to offer. And um, I just want to say thank you guys. Yeah. Oh, thank you too. Awesome. I love that <laughs> quote, man. No, you got the quotes. Like it just boom, boom, boom. <laughs> I want to, uh, <laughs> I want to, uh, I want to thank um, our panelists so much. I'm so, so thankful for all of our panelists for uh they, they no chelsea's like will you please have them share again <laughs> i want to thank you so much uh absolutely i want to thank you all so much for taking time to be a part of this webinar um again each of these panelists have been at circular change leadership conference uh lauren was going to be in it this year um she went to one with somebody at st john's uh, but they've always been involved they all have a heart to give back to students and to help people um, as you can already tell. And so hopefully they'll all get an invitation to Circular Change Virtual. I hope they all uh, receive it. Uh, so hopefully they'll, they'll be there. And obviously if we do webinars again in the future, um, definitely people will definitely reach out to. But we're so grateful for you all uh, for taking the time to be part of this wonderful session today. Um, thanks for all the people that are listening. Um, you have stood strong, went over time for about 10 minutes. So thank you for your, your patience and for uh, staying with us uh, over time. Um, but we're, you know, we're getting ready to get off, but I want to thank all of you so much. Um, and lastly, I want to just say uh, there's so many things to talk about uh, as it relates, but my whole thing is, again, is just stay ahead of the curve. Uh, they say flatten the curve. I say stay ahead of the curve. And what I mean by that is stay ahead. Stay ahead with where we're going, where technology is going, where the careers are going, where everything is going. Because truth be told, every time there's a major catastrophe, someone is inventing something and someone is creating something that is helping them to move forward. Uh, those who are making face masks right now, they're, have a, they're gonna have a wonderful business for a while. Those who are making hand sanitizers right now, they're gonna have a wonderful business right now. I just got off the phone with one of my friends and um, she was talking about having their hair done. And so there's people that have wraps and now wraps are like on the, like on the back end. So a lot of people are doing well right now. And so really just thinking about how can you stay ahead of the curve as well as be positioned for what things are gonna be when you come out of the, come out of the whole COVID-19. So. I want to thank y'all so much. Thank you all so much. Like us on Facebook. And I don't have nothing else to say. Does anybody have anything to say or just want to say bye-bye? Or I don't know. I'm just. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Right. Josh, I just want awesome. to say I'm excited that you're taking this virtual, like you're pivoting and it's yeah. such a great example. And I know with you going virtual and digital, you'll be able to reach even more people who need circle of change and all of your leadership. So exactly. I'm excited for you. Absolutely. Thank you. Oh yeah, absolutely. I'm so happy about that. You got me started because now we got East Coast and West Coast together. So I think it's so phenomenal that you have the East Coast and the West Coast and two and great people knowing each other. So you just never know how the world may, may spin around. So exactly. Um, awesome. I have to give a shout out to my company because they created an initiative during this time called um, hashtag alone together. Um, so this is a perfect example of us being alone, but together and finding ways to stay connected and making sure that like, for example, with Viacom, it's um, making sure that the employees feel like, you know, they're not just going through this on their own and we're all in this together and we're all finding ways to kind of, you know, work through this and kind of push through. So. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. 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 Thank you again. And, uh, everyone. Yes. And Dr. Sessions, yes, this is on our um, Circle of Change uh, Facebook page. So the whole thing is there. And then, Lauren, there's a question from somebody that's asking you about sports management in the NBA. And so it's uh, James. Oh, he's a student. Okay, okay James, since you're a Circle of, grad, Circle of Change grad, I'm going to go on and ask Lauren this question um, <laughs> at the end. And she's okay with it. Uh, he, real, real blunt, how do I get into the NBA? What are you looking for on a resume? Best events to connect. Should I consider grad school and sports management to increase my chances in the industry? Um, so I would say one, there's no prerequisite um, to have a background in sports. I had no background in sports. I came from media, from NBC Universal, and then from Condé Nast. So I was on more on the news print production side. Um, so no, um, I would say as far as it relates to how you get in, it's really gonna. It really comes down to what kind of role, right? We have associates programs and various entry points, um, and we work with a lot of different universities. We work with the Thurgood Marshall Fund and, and a ton of other organizations. Um, but I am always happy to connect with folks um, via LinkedIn, whatever it may be, to help kind of pass resumes along or provide any kind of coaching advice. So happy to do it. Awesome. Thanks so much, uh, Lauren and uh, James. Again, make sure you connect with everyone on LinkedIn. Yara is there. Nohan is there. Emily's there. Lauren's there. Deb, Deb, Debbie's there. Um, and I think some of them put in the chat already. So uh, connect, 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 connect. Again, thank you all so much. Uh, gave me 15 extra moments of your time. I really appreciate it. Um, I'll see y'all on the other side of COVID in person at some point. Again, thank y'all so much. And uh, have an incredible rest of the night. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. Take care. Bye.